What happens with symbols? Symbols represent energies or concepts or entities, etc. If, let's say, someone's praying to a symbol or holding that symbol, especially if they're gonna tattoo the symbol, that stands behind some kind of movement or some kind of entity or some kind of deity or or some kind of group of entities. It is a little bit like creating a contract, karmic contract with whatever the symbol represents. Hey, this is Mike Sigula from truefury.com and welcome to another episode of True Spirituality. So True Spirituality is my series of videos where I talk about metaphysics, esoteric ideas and teachings, mysticism, shamanism, consciousness, meditation, psychedelics, all sorts of relevant and related topics, how reality works on deep levels, philosophy as well. So if you like these types of subjects, welcome. This is episode 60 something already. So if you are new here, check out previous episodes as well. And just very quickly, before we can start, I do coaching one-on-one -on -one as well. I help people with things like personal development, spiritual development, how to manifest things that are good for us, why we attract certain things, how it's related to our imbalances, our intentions, things like that. So if you have some challenges in your life related to personal development or your spiritual development, have a look at truefury.com forward slash coaching. Check out different options there and get in touch because I do first initial quicker consultation free of charge. So you have nothing to lose. Maybe I'm going to be able to help you somehow. If not, I'm going to let you know as well. So nothing to lose. Get in touch, truefury.com forward slash coaching. And now let's talk about today's topic. So what are some of the consequences of certain tattoos? I have tattoos, as you can see. We're going to talk about it in a second. These are pretty old. Um, I would probably make different choice now, but we're going to get into that as well. So I just came back from Shaman's Festival which is uh, this kind of conscious festival in Poland. I, I grew up in Poland, currently in Poland, so I was invited to give a talk there on psychedelics and spiritual development. It was an amazing festival. I met loads of amazing people and I had really great deep conversations. It's like this non-alcoholic festival with music, with workshops and talks couple of days in nature and one of the guys I met there I just started to uh, chat with a guy there who had this interesting tattoo it was some kind of a shield Nordic or Viking shield that represents protection according to this guy right I asked him about it okay what what's the meaning of the symbol and he says yeah this is like this kind of uh, shield it represents protection blah 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 Okay, I, I don't know anything about the symbol. So I asked him, did anything change in your life since you got the tattoo? And he was like, yeah, actually, yes. I just had it three months ago, something like that. I started going to these festivals. These are like conscious festivals, blah, blah, blah no alcohol. And he said, you know, his spiritual evolution started happening or something like that. So, we could say that since you got the tattoo, some kind of path started unfolding and he said yes. Okay, it seemed good, right? It seemed like this is a good path. Maybe it's connected with the symbol. Now, I cannot tell you if this is a good symbol or not because I don't know much about it. I don't know the history, but I know a couple of things about tattooing symbols and maybe the path is really good maybe it's a really good symbol but sometimes there is a payment for something right 
sometimes if you get something there has to be a payment for it so it could be that yes it leads him or at least it looks like it's gonna be positive and then later down the line there is a fee and that might not be so fun because rarely you're gonna get anything for free right so let me tell you a little bit about why I think that tattooing specific symbols can be dangerous so first let's talk a little bit about the free will principle free will is one of the most fundamental laws in existence created by source consciousness we are all aspects of source consciousness so you can think about free will as gravity right if you are on earth you are subject to gravity no matter if you are big small male female everyone is subject to gravity right so free will is basically like a rule like like law of physics or something that affects everyone and everything in existence maybe except like super high levels because they can kind of manipulate but this is a different topic so for us everything is affected by free will that includes different worlds like higher densities for example negative beings positive beings they are also subject to free will free will is intertwined with karma so for example why why free will if there would be no rules like karma or free will stronger could take advantage of the weaker one for example right but if there are these rules in a way you are protected to some extent because the stronger cannot affect you unless you agreed to it you desired it or it's some kind of karma for something else you did somewhere else right so let's say we are making a deal i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna sell you this car and you're gonna give me whatever ten thousand dollars you give me the car let's say i didn't give you the money this means that we I broke the free will agreement here and I deserve karma for it right so this is how karma is intertwined obviously if you would ever sell a car to someone who would not pay it's your karma probably as well because this works both ways right and a lot of people might say oh my free will is violated every day <laughs> I definitely don't think this is true because even the fact where you are now what country this is linked to your previous incarnations because your life now is linked to some of your choices in the past and even place where you were born right so whatever is going on in your environment is actually linked to some of the choices you made before and sometimes before incarnation right so in a way we are constantly operating within our own free will now very often negative entities can only operate from feeding of some kind of suffering etc right but because of free will principle they can only affect something or someone if the person or the entity will want that agree to it desire it or do something where you know this is a consequence of that of the, their action right so this leads us to karmic contracts sometimes known as soul contracts and karmic contracts or soul contracts are basically part of free will mechanism or rule so let's say as in that previous example i said I don't know I'm selling a car to a guy for ten thousand dollars we made a karmic contract now yeah I said I'm gonna sell it to you you said you agreed to the deal that's it we don't have to write anything down there is an agreement already verbal because both of us agreed and we create karmic contract and let's say if I don't deliver or you don't deliver that means we are breaking trying to break the contract which gonna create karma right for one of us and now everything in existence through eons works on karmic contracts so for example if you pray to 
some kind of entity, deity, whatever, you might actually open karmic contract because you're not getting anything for free, right? Sometimes, maybe, if, if they're like super highly advanced beings, they don't want anything back, they want to help because if they help, they get positive polarization, right? The more they help, the more good karma they build and they can evolve even higher. So they wouldn't necessarily work with contracts. But for negative entities, this is definitely how they operate because, you know, they typically feed from some kind of suffering, things like that. And it's very hard to affect uh, someone without their agreement or without some kind of deal. This is also the principle behind black magic, right? So someone does some kind of rituals, they might manifest or get something, but there is a contract here and this person now needs to repay the fee to the entity behind. And sometimes it's not very obvious how it works. You know, maybe there's going to be an accident. Maybe they are just going to be used to uh, influence people in a negative way and this is how they get their power things like that that's a little bit different story so what happens with symbols symbols represent energies or concepts or entities etc so for example in the past we had sigils which were these symbols that would represent deities or entities right or let's say you call a name of an entity like Jesus or whatever. You are calling the entity, right? With symbol, it is very similar, right? Because the symbol is a representation of the entity or maybe a group of entities, maybe a whole movement, maybe a whole concept, right? So like the cross technically should represent Christianity, but I'm not 100% sure if this is a good symbol. Uh, because uh, based on my understanding, especially with Catholic faith, this is a very much hijacked religion by the negative. So they try to put a lot of symbols so people pray to them and then this is being uh, used, the energy is being used. But this is a different topic. So if, let's say, someone's praying to a symbol or holding that symbol, and especially if they're gonna tattoo the symbol, that stands behind some kind of movement or some kind of entity or some kind of deity or some kind of um, or some kind of group of entities it is a little bit like creating a contract karmic contract with whatever the symbol represents right so negative symbols like symbols representing you know who really in a way might represent some kind of pact some kind of contract some kind of uh karmic or soul contract with the entity or or the group of entities right so if a person tattoos a symbol that is linked to entity or group of entities it creates a contract with these entities right and you know, the person didn't say what kind of deal it was, it just got a tattoo, but the entity is then gonna decide what's gonna be the deal, right? And this is really bad. Because these very negative symbols, they basically allow the entities that are represented by the symbol to take whatever they wanna take from the person, for example, right? So it could be that person gets a lot of power a lot of money whatever but then this is gonna come in such a form that the entity is gonna feed of that so this is why it is super important to be very careful what kind of tattoo you're gonna have because the tattoo if it has some specific symbols that are linked to some specific groups of entities or whatever movements they are literally like signing a pact with that can it be cancelled removed revoked some people say no because it's on your skin and it's gonna continue until you decay and you know you, your soul goes into the next life i believe that we can always revoke 
and council contracts. I'm not sure what would be the ritual here, perhaps removing the tattoo with some kind of laser, maybe, but it would have to be done also with intention to cancel the contract. But honestly, this is just my speculation. I can't really tell you, I don't know much about canceling these types of agreements. You know, I don't want to scare people as well, but if you are thinking about the tattoo now, this is a good video because it might affect what's going to happen later on. Now, there are people who claim that um, even some kind of tattoos like tattoo of a moon or tattoo of a sun or tattoo of some animal, these can apparently affect person as well. There are people who claim that uh, whatever is the energy behind the symbol might affect the person. Some people think that if you're gonna have a tiger or whatever, right? Tiger might represent some kind of strength. You might get that strength, but there is a contract, right? There is nothing is for free. And you didn't say what you're gonna do in the return. So then these energies or the beings or uh, spirits might request something for, for giving you energy, right? I don't know much about it. I cannot tell you if it works like that with planets or with animals, whatever. Maybe it's more kind of symbolic and some of these characteristics might really influence the person, hard to say. Now, another thing I would watch out for is to have some kind of joint tattoos with another person that represents some kind of bond, like name of fiance or I don't know, something that one person has a half of that and the other person has a second half because in a way you create some kind of contract as well. And let's say your paths will go in different directions, you're gonna get divorced, whatever, and now you still have contracts here. So I would watch out for that as well. There are things like what kind of emotions the tattoos invoke in people who look at them, right? If you have skulls, some people might have negative association. If you have sun, they might have positive. I would watch out for things like snakes in general. I don't consider these to be positive symbols. And what about my tattoos? So this tattoo here, and this one. So these are old tattoos more than 10 years ago. I've had them done. And uh, the, the tattoo here represents gambling in a way, plus it has seven, which is my uh, number in numerology. But the gambling aspect very much re resembles my life because in a way my life has been a gamble all the time, always living on the edge and things like that. So it became prophetic, maybe it's linked to the tattoo, maybe that's my nature and it became a symbol of that, I don't know. I just picked that subconsciously years ago. Family, the, this is just something I always felt like family is important. This is the meaning. I don't think these are like really bad ones in a way, but now I would probably not have them <laughs> if, if I would have choice now if I would have to do them again and know what I understand now. So again, not want to scare anyone off, but be careful, especially for some kind of symbols that have meanings that are connected to something. Because even if the symbol is said is good, is protective, a lot of negative entities, they are tricksters, right? So there is a lot of misinformation, especially in religion, right? The people think they pray to this and they pray to something completely different. Or maybe the entity was a positive entity, whatever, 7,000 years ago or thousands of years ago, and now it's not anymore. And you know, person might get in contract with that. Actually, one more example of how tattoos might influence people. So, like I said, I just came back from this festival and I was giving a talk and one of the girls there in the audience asked me about sleep paralysis. And I didn't get if it was this girl or her friend, 
but one of them basically has a problem with sleep paralysis. She says that's been like going on for months or something and you know it seems very scary. She's kind of like in between, can't wake up, can't fall asleep, something like that, right? And she was asking me if I think this might have to do with some kind of you know negative entities, whatever. Later on, I noticed that the girl who asked the question, I saw her back later on and she had a full back with some really nasty looking demon on the back and some symbolism. And I felt like, wow, this is a really negatively looking symbol. And I'm not saying, I'm just speculating, but maybe it is connected to what she was talking about because the symbol definitely didn't look good and the tattoo was really invoking very negative aspects. So maybe this is the contract I'm talking about, very probable. So hope this is useful and before you're gonna get a tattoo, think twice and not to scare people off. I think overall tattoos are amazing uh, artwork, but just be more conscious on what you're gonna put there. And, and you know, if you wanna work with me one-on-one, -on -one, have a look at truefury.com forward slash coaching, get in touch. And uh, if the video resonates, share it with others on social media, give it a like, let me know in the comments what do you think about what we said. And until next time.